Welcome everyone to the first of our Back to Business Masterclasses. This time we're talking you through how to create your website. We expect the session to be about 90 minutes long with a mix of videos, interviews and a workshop with one of our specialists. Today's masterclass is being recorded and will be shared on our blogs at a later date so you can catch up later. To make the session as interactive as possible, please use the tools to interact with each other and the panelists. Please use the Q&A tool to ask your questions and keep the general comments within the chat box. So take a moment to warm up by introducing yourself. Let us know who you are, your business name, and if you use any GoDaddy products. Make sure your message is being sent to all panelists and attendees by selecting this option from the drop down in the chat box tool. While you're all getting to know each other, let me quickly run you through the agenda. First up, Sakshi Anand, Managing Director of GoDaddy UK and Ireland, will tell you more about GoDaddy and the purpose of these masterclass events. Keep an eye out for the polls as we'd love to hear from you. Then Sakshi will be joined on the virtual stage by triple Olympic gold medalist Ed Clancy OBE. Ed will share his experience of what it's like to train for the Tokyo Olympics while also running a business. After that, our customer care specialist, Louis Brightman, will deliver a masterclass on creating a website. Then we have Faye Busby from the British Chamber of Commerce for our final interview of the day. Faye will give more information on how local chambers can help businesses around the country in areas such as international and domestic trade. Finally, thank you, a huge thank you for joining us this morning. As I mentioned, this is our first event of our 2021 series, so your feedback is incredibly valuable. Look out for a link to our survey at the end of the session. We'd really appreciate if you could fill this out when we're finished, as it will help us improve future events in this series and beyond. That's all from me. I'll now hand over to Sakshi, who'll kick off. Thanks, Sakshi. Thank you, thank you. Um, and please do keep putting your businesses in the chat as well. It's, it's really nice to know where everyone's joining from um, and also their businesses. So um, it's great that so many of you have been able to join. Thank you very much for joining. Um, and I know we've got businesses from across the UK representing all sort of range of businesses um, here. Uh, and I'm really excited to be able to share some GoDaddy insights and also around and some tips and tricks around setting up an online business with you this morning. Um, we expect the session to be around 90 minutes, but again, it's a live event, so it could be plus minus a little bit over as well. Um, before we kick off, you must be wondering or not, actually, who is GoDaddy? So, well, let us show you uh, through a video. GoDaddy is a mirror to all the dreamers, makers, movers and shakers. And we're on a mission to empower everyday entrepreneurs by giving them all the help and tools they need to grow online. And to help them get back to business. Take Clap for Our Carers, the brainchild of GoDaddy customer Anne-Marie Plass. When tough times struck, she adapted. And the reason why I picked GoDaddy above the other uh, providers is because of the really good reviews and saying how simple and easy to use it was. And that was exactly what I needed, something with speed and something that was easy. She clapped her hands in gratitude for the NHS workers and the nation followed. From the front line to online, Anne-Marie's GoDaddy website took her message to the world. Andrew Walker of Gingerbread Bakery also cooked up a storm. When setting up his business in February, COVID-19 started to take hold. So Andrew turned up the heat on his online activities and he started to gain traction. His secret ingredient? GoDaddy Websites Plus Marketing. Then there was Ruth Bradford of the Little Black and White Book Project. Inspired by her own journey of motherhood and the benefits of black and white images for newborn visual development, Ruth started her own business. During lockdown, she made the difficult decision to stop selling, but gave away free resources online. Something which she says triggered the most amount of traffic ever to her website. GoDaddy, it's the place folks come to name their idea, to build a great looking website and to market it to the world. We champion entrepreneurs by delivering the perfect help and tools for their journey. For all the help and tools you need to grow online, GoDaddy. Thank you. 
Um, it's really exciting reading through the chat. It's really exciting to see so many um, range of businesses actually that are here. So very excited to share insights today. Um, please do share your stories uh, with us actually on social media also. So tag us as Godaddy UK on Twitter. Instagram is at Godaddy UK. Um, and we take our customer stories and, and promote them as well. So it uh, would be great for you guys to share uh, your business stories with us. Okay, um, we want this session to be interactive. I know it's very difficult to do over Zoom, uh, but please use the chat function. Please ask questions in the Q&A section, uh, the Q&A button uh, on Zoom. And also I'll be running a few polls just to make sure that we're covering all the issues, all the topics that you want to be covered in the next hour and a half or so. Um, so why are we here today? Um, what's the agenda, as, as Frankie mentioned, but um, why are we here? Now, as we see hopefully light at the end of the tunnel here in the UK, it's coming out, phased exit from the lockdown, we're here to help. Over the last year, we saw that businesses have gone through immense change in the business models as compared to pre-COVID. Um, we've seen a lot of businesses have gone online for the first time, and that's led to its own challenges. I see, for example, getting traffic, how to promote your business, and so on. And uh, we're hoping that through this Back to Business Masterclass Sessions series, which is going to run over the next two months, we can add value, provide some tips, tricks, and uh, take you through a journey on how to grow your business online uh, as well as we go into some sort of a new normal as well. With that in mind, I'd love to hear from you through a quick fire poll so that we know we are covering all aspects of, um, of uh, the agenda that you want to cover. So what have you found to be the biggest challenge with taking your business online? Is it creating a website, promoting your business online, selling your products and services online, or maintaining an online presence through other digital channels? So you should see the uh, poll on your screen. So just going through again, the options are creating a website, promoting my business online, selling products and services online, or maintaining online presence through other digital channels as well. All right, so I have the results here. And um, the biggest challenge which, which the attendees have pointed out is creating a website at 46% followed by promoting business online at 31%, selling products and services at 15, and then maintaining online presence through other digital channels at 9%. Well, you clearly come to the right place in that case. Um, and in back to business uh, masterclasses over the next two months, we will be covering all of them with starting with the creating a website today. So um, um, we'll get started with that. Um, before we do that, actually, um, Let's go through, let's go into the world of elite sports. Um, in March, you may or may not know, uh, Godaddy announced its sponsorship of Team GB for this year's um, Tokyo Olympics. And we are really, really excited to work with Team GB as an official partner and fueling our athletes and entrepreneurs as they go for gold. Now, during our initial conversations with Team GB and their athletes as well, and Team GB athletes as well, we realized that a number of Olympians actually run their own businesses either um, or want to do in the future as well. Either they've retired or even while um, training um, to be in the Olympics, um, they are building a business, they are running a business as we speak. So today we are very, very excited to speak to Ed Clancy, OBE, Team Pursuit track cyclist, three times Olympian, Olympic champion, six time world champion, and five time European champion, making him the most successful Team Pursuit cyclist in history. Wow. Um, we'll be speaking to Ed about his Olympic career, um, how his Olympic career has prepared him for his business, Clancy Brick Cycling Academy, and also, um, very importantly, how is he manage, managing to uh, juggle athletic and business commitments, especially during the pandemic as well. Um, welcome, welcome, Ed. Um, I'm honoured to be interviewing you here. Thanks, Sakshi. That was very kind. That was a nice introduction. And thanks, everyone, for having me. And before we get started into the business and, and all of that, how's the training going for Tokyo? Uh, good, thanks so far. You've caught me at an interesting week because um, we've basically got another four track sessions before the Olympic selections is um, 
is going to be decided. They're not going to tell us until the 24th of May, but we've essentially got this afternoon, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week. So we're all on our best behaviour right now and we're trying to bring our aim game to the track every day. Well, you all have, uh, you have wishes from all of us, best wishes from all of us for that, I'm sure. Um, and so what inspired you to start your business as well, Ed? Well, I think this isn't unique to me. You, you hear almost every entrepreneur or business owner say it, but I think what really inspired me to start a cycling academy business was, funnily enough, you know, a love of cycling above all else. I think it probably helps to have an analytical mind or a business-minded person involved at least. But, you know, for me, it's, it's the love of cycling. And I guess that's been pretty evident throughout my career. But, you know, even outside of my career and my sport, you know, my spare time, I hang out on my mountain bikes and my trials bikes and things like that. And, you know, my, my friends outside of uh, the cycling profession, you know, I, I, I meet up on the weekends with a, a car mechanic and a farmer and we go play on the mountain bikes together. So uh, it's just my love of cycling. And, you know, when I think back to my childhood and my youth, I know how much of a difference it made to me and my friends, you know, to be able to get out on a bike and enjoy yourself. And I felt I could, you know, enjoy myself and express myself in a way I never could in a classroom. And, you know, the world is changing all the time. And I think for the youth of today, it's getting harder and harder to get out and enjoy your bike. Um, so that's why I did it. Nice. So tell us a little bit more about actually Clancy Briggs Cycling Academy. Sorry, yeah. So the Clancy Briggs Cycling Academy is um, it's very much like every other kids academy out there. So you might have seen something like Swim Babies or Mini Kicks Football Club and... It's essentially, the, by and large, the, the Clancy Briggs Cycling Academy is a monthly subscription. Uh, you know, the parents pay every month and there's weekly sessions, 45 minute to, a, a, to an hour sessions for the kids. Uh, the kids a, range in ages from 18 months to 16 years old. And, you know, if it's about one thing, it's fun. You know, at it, it, the older age, of the spectrum you know, if the kids are having fun because they're getting fit and they're winning races that's great you know with the little nippers on the balance bikes if they're having fun and they're meeting the mates and they're doing social activities and they're jumping through hoops you know ultimately it's it's fun that we want to give our clients and it's that that's going to keep them coming back for more so if it's about one thing it's fun you know it we're not trying to reinvent um anything new really we're not trying to reinvent the wheel if you like we're just trying to bring a wheel to it you know there's there's been kids academy since the dawn of time but i don't think anyone's given a cycling academy a good go so hopefully we're going to try and do that nice and so how do you juggle your athletic and business commitments give us some tips on time management i guess the textbook answer is that when you feel that, you know, your time's becoming saturated and, you, you know, you're at four fifths or five fifths capacity and it's when you notice yourself start, starting to do emails at, you know, 10 p.m. and, uh, you know, you're working a 12 hour day on a Sunday. That's when you need to start getting in help. And um, I, I guess outsourcing is difficult, you know, it's, especially if you're a person that likes to have complete and entire control over everything. And I guess as an athlete, you know, you can you can relate to that. And it feels difficult to kind of let go of things. But I think that's the ideal, you know, when, once you've got to a point where your time's completely saturated, it, it's just the logical decision. You need to bring in help. And I'm not saying you need to go and employ someone for 30 grand a year, you know. You can start looking at friends and you just say, oh, is there any chance you can help me out here and there? And it can start small, but I think you just, in an ideal world, you wouldn't ever get to that point where, you know, People do get burnt out. People throw the towel in because they try and take on too much. They try and have all the ownership. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that's a big, um, it's a business killer because unless you're very privileged and you're very, very lucky, you know, the nine out of 10 people are going to have to work a full-time job and, you know, kind of start growing the business in the spare times and the evenings and weekends. So, you know, be mindful of that. Makes sense. And how did COVID-19 and lockdowns affect your business as well? Uh, obviously, um, it affected it. So how did it affect and what did you do um, as well during that time in terms of business? Yeah, so we, we, we launched Academy in January last year. And in some ways, it couldn't have been worse timing, you know, for a kid's academy, a cycling academy. Um, so after 12 weeks of trading, you know, we had a great start. We started off with 85 members, literally as soon as we opened the doors. Um, so that was great. 
you know, we're starting to build our uh, fan base, you know, things were going up, the social media stuff was going well, we we're getting more and more members and 12 weeks in, lockdown happened, the, the cycle track was closed, we couldn't do the mm. after school clubs. So, um, yeah, that's obviously how it affected us, but, you know, the first time we did lockdown, we, we pretty much just stopped all operations, we stopped all outgoings and we just put the whole operation on pause. And then we got going again, you know, through the summer, once we were out of lockdown. And straight away, we doubled our membership, you know, in the first couple of weeks. And it was great. We had a real good run of momentum towards the back end of last summer, uh, just in time to get into another lockdown. Now, the second time we went into lockdown, we, we, we tried to fight it a bit more. So instead of just pausing everyone's subscriptions, you know, cancelling the van insurance, st stopping all outgoings, we, we kept things rolling. And, you know, we try to take it online. So we did online Zoom classes. We would teach kids about this is how you prepare. This is how you pack your kit bag. This is what good bike maintenance looks like. So we did as much as we could online. It wasn't for everyone, but it kept things rolling. It gave us something to talk about on the social channels and so on. So we did that. And um, I guess we've been doing that on and off ever since. And, uh, you know, now here we are and we're back to business. And again, things have boomed straight away. And there's a real... Um, want for people to go out and get back out into the wild but we've, we've definitely learned some things in the lockdown and without it let's put it this way it really forced us to kind of look at what's working what isn't working and it gave us time as well to kind of like have a review and think well what else can we do and there's some things like the online stuff the online coaching you know that's a winner and we want to keep doing that makes sense um there's a question by one of the attendees very interesting question that how long were you planning from the initial idea to getting the business up and running in january 2020 <laughs> well funnily enough i have so it's called clancy briggs uh, my name's ed clancy the, the other part of the business is graham briggs so we, we're in at 50 50 and um we, we, we spoke first about this idea about eight or nine years ago now. You know, we've been good friends for a long, long time. We've been on the same uh, pro road team. Uh, you know, f we rode together for about a decade in the same road team. And, uh, you know, it, we had this conversation a long time ago. And um, I guess the idea grew and then, you know, it started getting a little bit more formal. You know, we even got bits of paper out at one point and started writing ideas down and doing drawings and, you know, we even started ringing people and contacts and sponsors of our current teams and current sponsors and asked them what they thought about the idea. And yeah, it took us about six or seven years to really think, right, you know, let's let's get some money together. Let's talk about like getting a van. Let's speak to some van people. Let's speak to some bike people. Let's get some bikes in. And uh, I guess coincidentally, at that point in time, there was a, a purpose-built cycle circuit in Doncaster which we knew would be like the ideal home for our Clancy Briggs Cycling Academy to have its first franchise, if you like. So uh, yeah, as soon as we knew that place was getting built, we were straight on the phone to Doncaster Council and took it from there. But it was a, it was a long time in the, in, in the planning, if you like, but it didn't need to be that long, you know? It, it, we could have done it in a couple of months, all the talking and all the sort of groundwork and all the preparation, um, but I'm glad we thought it through. Makes sense. And then what made you realize you need a website for your business as well? And any tips or any advice you can offer um, our attendees on, on creating a website um, that has e-commerce and this and sort of whatever you need to get your business live and running? Yeah, I, I, get, I mean, it's the, it's the 21st century, first and foremost, you know, and uh, uh, there are a few businesses out there, I dare say, that probably won't need websites. You know, if all your sort of customer base is people you know personally, but for everybody else, I think you need a website. But what that looks like is a different thing. So um, I personally have my own website, you know, edclancy.co.uk. And um, it's fit for purpose. It tells people what I've done, uh, you know, who I've worked with in the past. And it's got testimonials. You know, I, I'll get some traffic to the website. But the truth be told, I get 99% of sort of my personal Olympian stuff you meet people, you give them a business card, you create a relationship and they go to that website to sort of reference, yes, indeed, he has done this. And, you know, he can stand up and do a public speech in front of my audience. Um, now for the Clancy Briggs operation, that's got a different website entirely. And uh, there's no way on earth, you know, we could run that business without the website. The website pretty much is 
the business. You know, first and foremost, it shows uh, people, you know, loads of people that we wouldn't ordinarily meet. You know, who are we? You know, what is our brand? It's got to be an easy platform for people to go and buy stuff from our online shop and sign up to membership. Uh, but it's, it's more than that, the Clancy Briggs website. There's a whole uh, back end of the website. I don't know what the official term for it is. The public can't see it, but the, the directors and the coaches log on to the back end of the website. So, you know, for every, we've got a calendar with every coaching session that's going on during the week. And for every coaching session, um, it's got a register. We have to have a register of all the kids that are attending. We have to have a health and safety check for every session. Um, you know, it's, it's essentially a tick box thing, but these boxes have to be ticked. Um, we've got to do a health and safety thing. You know, we even know if little Johnny hasn't been star of the week for the last four months. So, and that's on the coach's agenda. We know which kids can do which skills. And yeah, we pretty much run the entire business off, you know, it helps with accounts and everything like that. Uh, okay. the, the back end of the website is so important for that Clancy Briggs thing. So to answer your question, you just need a website that's fit for purpose. Yeah, makes sense. And and how did you, uh, what other digital channels do you use as well um, for to promote your business? Because one of the challenges, and you'll probably see through some questions as well, is I have a website, how do I get people to visit the website as well? So what other channels do you use, digital or otherwise, to promote your business? I guess the, the short answer is all of them, apart from TikTok, I think. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, it, and you kind of, you learn which ones work well. So, um, you know, I remember when we started this operation, I always thought like Instagram would be the big one. And, you know, we get a lot of um, uh, sort of new customers through that. I think in reality, you know, we, we've got an Instagram page and a Twitter page. The kids love Instagram. The Instagram is really for the kids because they want to show their friends, oh, this is what I'm part of. And, you know, and uh, at this point now, we're paying a, a, a marketing person to do, you know, our Twitter, our LinkedIn posts, um, but we, we do them all, but they all have a different purpose. So like I was saying, I think it's the kids that enjoy the Instagram and they want to show the friends and you know what kids are like with their iPhones these days. And then the parents, we get most of our business, funnily enough, through Facebook. And uh, to me, that was a big surprise. But I, I guess when I think about it now, it, it shouldn't be. There's a lot of parenting groups on Facebook. And, you know, if, if we put, uh, you know, even 20 quid, 50 quid behind a, a sponsored uh, Facebook post, that's the best 20 quid we could ever spend, honestly. And uh, in terms of LinkedIn, you know, that's, it's useless for, you know, the kids. You know, no kids are on LinkedIn or anything like that. But in terms of us, you know, finding like bike partners and sponsors and things like that, you know, for me, for me personally, as Ed Clancy, and, you know, what I bring to the Clancy Briggs operation, LinkedIn is the, the most useful thing by far. Okay. So um, I, I guess all, all the different channels have the different uses and, you know, probably a bit of trial and error at first isn't a bad thing just to work out, you know, what, what's going well. That makes sense. Um, I'll take a question from the Q&A here. Um, we've answered the social media one, but um, Ed, did you have experience building a website or are you a beginner as well? Any tips for beginners? Um, Laura asked this question. So... Um... Graham Briggs, the other half of the business, his wife has a friend that builds websites. So we, we had someone we knew and someone we trusted. Um, actually, that's not right. I'll rewind a little bit there. This is the one and only time we've got burnt. And it's probably worth mentioning uh, here to everyone here. So we went to a recommended source, uh, a fella from the Midlands. I won't mention his name, but, you know, we had this big launch date planned. This was prior to January 2020. And, uh, you know, we wanted to make a bit of a show and tell about it. You know, we rang the local newspapers and so on. And, you know, we had this fellow that sort of committed to uh, building us at least a, a homepage and a website so people could go and see what we're about. And he failed to meet the deadlines. And um, we never did get our money back. So we got burnt, you know, first time out. And then quite quickly, we managed to source this friend of um, Graham's wife. And to be fair, you know, she, she was great. You know, she built it all. And, you know, um, because she was a friend, you know, we were in constant contact and it, it, like I said, the Clancy Briggs website is a big operation and, you know, I couldn't have done that myself. Um, I kind of know where my skills lie and, I, you know, I was best placed not wasting my time trying to do that. But um, I guess my advice is, um, you know, do your research and, you know, if you, if you do need help, get help, you know, 
is um, it doesn't matter what you do. If you're a builder or a plumber, you know, do what you're good at, you know, build things and do plumbing and, you know, like, you know, be involved with it, you know, put your two cents in, absolutely. But, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help. No, it makes sense. And again, I wouldn't be, um, I, I'm working for GoDaddy, so I have to mention this, that websites plus marketing from GoDaddy is super simple for beginners. So it's mainly drag and drop and connecting to Google, Instagram, yep. and all of that in one go. So it's, and I'm sure Louis will take us through it as well. So um, there is that option also. Absolutely, um, yeah. I'm sure it's an option we'd have considered, yeah. Um, and uh, then it, in terms of business advice as well, any business advice you can offer our attendees, which you wish you'd sort of been given at the start of your business journey as well? Uh, probably the same advice I wish had been given at the start of sport or life for that matter. I think um, <laughs> I just don't underestimate how many uncontrollables there are. And um, I learned this from a psychologist in British cycling, Steve Peters, years and years and years ago, and I've never forgot it. And I think it's really important to have clarity on, you know, what your dreams are and what your goals are. And they are two different things, at least in his opinion. So, uh, is look at the sporting example. The the dream for me is to go and win the Olympics in Tokyo. And, you know, you get your gold medal and you have a great time and you spray champagne around a nightclub with your mates and everyone's happy. That's the dream. But it is a dream, you know, and it's dependent on a lot of things that aren't in my control. You know, if the Australians turn up and they've got a great aero package and they're all in red hot form and they go 10 seconds faster than the world record, we ain't going to win. It's as simple as that. So... The dream is going to be a big dream, but it remains a dream. The goals are really what's more important. So the goals for me are to eat five fruit and veg a day, you know, make sure I'm getting nine and a half hours sleep a day, make sure I'm in constant contact with my coach. You know, like these are attainable, sort of doable, boring, mundane, day-to-day -day things. And it's the same with business, you know. I've got this dream where we have this Clancy Briggs Cycling Academy that's, you know, we've got 100,000 members and with the authority in kids cycling, but that's a dream and it remains a dream. The goals are to, you know, answer my emails, check in regularly with the staff, try and build up a good emotional bank account with all my friends and directors. And, you know, it was, I think it was Aristotle that kind of summed it up when he said, excellence is a habit, not an act. And it's, it's the same thing. It's just ticking the boxes day in, day out. That's um, just control the controllables and make sure you keep doing them. This is such a great takeaway, personally, for me as well, actually, that dreams and goals, so focus on the goals yeah. while having a dream. Exactly, um, yeah. I mean, the dream's important because you need that for motivation, you know? It's gotta, <laughs> you've got to inspire you, you know? It's got to be like an emotional thing. Um, but uh, it's, it's the goals that make people winners. It's the people that, you know, eat five fruit and veg a day and, you know, sleep and maintain their bike and you know, keep in touch with the staff, have regular audits and things like that. It's the practical stuff you can actually get an handle on that, that make people win as I think. Yeah, and somebody's just put in the comments there, never given up, that's a good one as well. Nice, that's amazing actually. This is a great takeaway. Um, with that, what does the future look like for your business and um, how do you plan to become the authority of kids cycling that you just mentioned as well then? Yeah, so... Um, I've always had more ambition than talent. First things first, we've got to, um, we've got to nail down our, our sort of current branch, if you like. So we started at the track in Doncaster and we've got schools around it. And, uh, you know, we, I believe we're getting to the point now where we're starting to work. Uh, we, we know what works best, sorry. You know, we've uh, we started doing like these full uh, day classes and they work really well in the kids' holidays, you know, when parents can travel a bit further. And So long story short, we, we're going to get this Doncaster branch nailed down and then the next step is to start franchising it across the UK. We've already had a few inquiries and, um, you know, that's great. It's very flattering. But the truth is we want to get it right before we start going. And, and you know, that's bring it back to the website. It's a good job. We've invested a lot of time and effort in the website because when we do get out there, it's going to make it so much easier for the mm -hmm. franchisees to, you know, take on our already uh, the platform that already exists We'll only have to make small modifications and it's good to go and replicate out. You know, we can make carbon copies of that um, across the UK in theory. So that's the plan. Sounds great, actually. Um, this was 
fantastic. And, and thank you so much for sharing your journey tips, um, your sort of journey from your cycling, um, cycling sort of time in terms of Olympics as well, and also in terms of the business. Um, from everyone here at GoDaddy, and I'm sure from the attendees as well, good luck for Tokyo 2020. We can't wait to see you in action. And good luck for the next month or so as well um, as you prepare for Olympics. Thanks, Saksha. That's very kind. And uh, thanks to everyone online. And I hope uh, all your websites and businesses go great. Cheers, everyone. Thank you, Ed. Cheers. So thank you. Thank you, Ed, again. Um, I am now uh, delighted to welcome Louis Brightman from GoDaddy. My colleague, Louis, will be sharing a masterclass or running a masterclass, rather, showing what does it take to build a great website and utilize it effectively. Welcome, Louis. Thanks very much, Sakshi. Hi, everybody. It's great to see all the messages, by the way, with like all the little businesses, uh, complete range, it looks like as well. Um, all kinds of services available. So awesome stuff. Good to see everybody. Ed as well, great inspiring words. Um, but today we're going to talk a little bit about um, what the poll said was like half of, more than half of you are wondering like how to create your website. And then obviously the biggest challenge seems to be how to actually get it found. So we'll touch on all this today here. And hopefully at the end, if you've got some questions, fire them through as well. And I'll do my best to, to answer them for you. So creating a great business website. So a few of the topics here that we're just going to cover off is going to be choosing the right website for your business. So of course, many websites, sometimes you might just need a business card or maybe you're a full e-commerce. I've seen some people there making their own gifts and little cards and things like that. And you can see one of our customers there selling her cupcakes. So like depending on what you need, GoDaddy's website's a marketing tool. We're gonna to go into this here because it truly is an all-in-one. You know, it helps you build the website and connect it to all your social media and Google. So we'll, we'll touch on that a wee bit. And then of course, there is some other options out there like WordPress, um, which holds about you know, a large market share. A lot of websites are built with WordPress. So those are our two main platforms that you're gonna see at GoDaddy. WordPress and the GoDaddy websites and marketing tool. And then finally, uh, the biggest challenge is getting it found and creating some nice content. So we'll, we'll give you a few tips here on what makes a good website. So like just to start off here, I'm not sure what everybody's experience level is, but uh, the building blocks for building a website, I like to think of it, there's only two building blocks. And the third one is, is really you, like the content tends to come from you, but the domain name, if you think of that as like the number of your house, so your mybusiness.com or .co.uk, that is really just the name. So a domain can be bought uh, anywhere. Well, GoDaddy is the largest registrar in the world. So we're gonna be the most stable place to buy a domain from. And then secondly, uh, hosting is a term that gets thrown around a lot that people don't really know what it means. Um, but if you think your website's built with pictures and text and files, and it needs to be like live on the web, so think of this as the bricks and mortar and the windows and the electricity of your house. You know, you need that, you need that there to, to keep everything live. And every website has a domain and it has hosting. So that will usually comprise of like a yearly or two yearly sort of fee to keep these things live. And then thirdly, your content. So <clears throat> what kind of website are you gonna need? So I've seen from the chat, there's some awesome sounding businesses there, people creating greeting cards and uh, consultants out there, people working alongside the NHS, providing services and psychotherapy. It sounds awesome just reading the chat. So as you can see, all of your businesses can all be hosted here. You know, uh, the great thing about GoDaddy is we, I've been here for three years and the fact that we offer the free support, like I'm, I'm constantly just having chats with customers. I'll maybe, Get a chat with some of you soon as well uh, but we're able to help you to figure out you know what do i actually need for my business and ultimately make sure you're not going to buy anything that you don't need as well so yeah we can look after you whether it's just a brochure all the way up to full e-commerce yeah so you want to maybe ask yourself some of these questions here uh, what are you really looking for is it is your talent in what you do like are your 
services uh, where you sort of make an impact on people? Do you just need a business card there? Or is your website, like what Ed said, is the website the main focus of the business? Uh, so those are some things you want to think about. Uh, the plans always come in threes here at GoDaddy as well. So as you can see, we've standard, premium, and e-commerce. So as I say, you don't need to buy anything that you don't need. And the final question is a really good one. People think, well, if I've got supplies coming in after lockdown here, and maybe I'm not going to be ready to sell within six months, and I just need maybe a coming soon page, you know, to approach suppliers. Because that tends to be a common thing. Like when you're setting up a business, it's hard to sort of start building relationships with people unless you have that sort of presence online to sort of verify, like what Ed said earlier, like reference and see, right, okay, that person is legit. Um, so you don't need to go, you know, straight to e-commerce if you plan on selling in the future. We can help you seamlessly sort of upgrade and move it forward as and when you need to. So yeah, if any of these questions that you're thinking like, I don't really know the answer and I want a bit of clarification, 24 seven support is available on the phone at GoDaddy. And honestly, just give us a call and you'll be looked after. So GoDaddy's website builder is our flagship product. And it's a bit like a snowball rolling down the hill at the moment. It's just picking up more and more and more and more as it goes. And especially in the last 12 months, uh, we've really took it forward in terms of the marketing side of it. Because it used to be just a website builder. You know, you'd build your website, it hosts it and secures it all in one. So just to, to touch on that for a second, hosting, you know, this doesn't just create your website and then you need to go and buy hosting separately and pay for security. This is literally an all-in-one tool, including your marketing tools now. So over the last 12 months, you've now got... Uh, a really intuitive dashboard that helps you to connect your website to Google, start to improve your Google ranking. And also when you're posting on social media, businesses don't tend to do the average sort of post, do they? They like to look a bit more professional. So we've got all of this professional post creator and the building of your website all in one simplified dashboard. So I couldn't like, you just have to try it out yourself. Like if you get a 30 day trial, um, and give us a call. One of the things we're doing, because it's so easy to use, we will actually build four to five pages for you guys for free. Uh, so I've heard in the chat there, like, you know, I need a website built, how do I get started? If you don't know, call GoDaddy and we can actually build, you know, four to five pages to get you started for free. If you're gonna go down the route of the GoDaddy builder and you'll see it's all mobile optimized, the main reason you'll use this is so that you can focus on what you do and your website is all taken care of. You know, all the little techy things, they're all done for you. And at the bottom here, the data collector, so we've got some AI built into the dashboard. So you're actually gonna be able to track who's looking at your site, who's finding you via social media, and you'll actually get step-by-step -step, uh, instructions on how to take advantage of this info. So say, for example, you're running your online card shop You've had maybe 15 people over the last week bounce into your shopping cart, add in a few cards, and maybe for some reason or another, they haven't actually made the purchase, but they've left it in their cart and then they've gone. This data collector is going to come back to you and be like, look, Shelly and, and Sharon and, and Jim, they've all left some stuff in their cart. Why don't you put together a nice email, send it out to them. Hey, thanks for looking at my site. Is there anything you're not sure of? Any questions I can answer? You know, you being able to engage with your customers, the most successful people, that's what they're doing. You know, they're reaching out, they're on social media and, and taking action on this, you know? So yeah, it's all in one and it's gonna really help you to get started. It's easy to view everywhere. So I know I mentioned already, it's mobile optimized. We tend to uh, take this for granted these days at GoDaddy because it's just what we do. Like we've, we've had the mobile optimization in for a couple of years now. But in general, you would have had to like edit your site for a mobile and think about the different devices out there. We have you covered. So whether it's an iPad, phone, laptop, uh, full widescreen, computer screen, uh, your website's going to look great no matter what. You know, that's the, the main thing here. You just have to worry about your own content and your own imagery, you know. 
So selling products online, uh, again, if you haven't done this before, you might think that this is like really daunting task. How do I set up my payments? How do I upload products? And, you know, do I need to uh, do this and that? Again, it's all in one. It's just as easy for you to build an online store that takes full payments with all your options on your products, just the same as it is to build a business card. Maybe just a little bit more time, you know. Uh, and as you can see there, up to 5,000 products. So unless you're an absolute rock star with more than 5,000 products, we are going to be able to look after you here. So one of the biggest challenges, I think in the second in the poll, wasn't it? Um, how do you actually get your website found? Again, um, there's a multiple multitude of factors that can really affect, you know, how people are finding you. And then, of course, your Google ranking is the main one, isn't it? We all want to make sure that people are finding us on that platform because it's the most searched place. Like, we all go on Google. So, yeah, I mean, in my opinion, the, the top three things is going to be your social media activity. Uh, so if you're posting regularly, you're reaching out to people, maybe other people on Facebook and Instagram are sharing things that you're, you know, and, and you're reaching out to people as well to drive this sort of engagement. That's number one for me. Uh, number two is have everything in line with your website. Now, this isn't a challenge because, as I mentioned earlier with the AI, the dashboard is going to literally walk you through step by step on how to optimize every page of your website. It could not be easier, guys, I'm telling you, because you'll, you'll set up your home page, your About Us page, your services page, and then the SEO tool is literally going to walk you through adding keywords, and if you're local, like a plumber, like it mentions here, if you're only serving a certain radius, it's going to take that into consideration as well. And as you can see on the right, you've probably seen when you're looking online for a Pizza Hut or any, some, any, any food local, you'll see there's a Google review there. That's a free profile. And um, it surprises me how many people don't realize that it's, a, it's, a, it's like a Facebook page, you know, it's a Google My Business profile. And the website builder, if you start with GoDaddy, we're actually going to walk you through setting that up as well. Um, as I say, those are the top two things is setting up your, your Google business profile and being a bit active on social media. Cool. So moving forward, the website builder is not the only option out there. Uh, we're partners with WordPress. So GoDaddy, the largest host for WordPress sites as well. And I think just to talk about the WordPress a bit, I think 40% of the sites out there would be built with this plan uh, because it's a lot more advanced. And I mean, there's a lot more that it takes to put it all together. So the main benefit of the web builder, as I said, it's got everything all in one dashboard. Uh, WordPress works a bit like your iPhone. So my iPhone will do a whole load of different things than your phone will just based on the apps I download. Yeah. So WordPress runs like that. You download all different apps and you've got third-party plugins to do all your different kinds of functionality. So it's almost like the web builder is a, everything all in one. There's one booking system, one payment provider. It's all done there for you so you can just crack on. But WordPress, yeah, it's like building it from the ground up. So we can do this as a service for you as well. So if you put people out there who are thinking, I want something that's really, really customized. I want to build this from the ground up and really just put my own spin on everything. Then GoDaddy offer this as a design service. So I would suggest to give us a call, have a full consultation with us just to find out whether, well, actually, maybe the website builder will fit. Or yes, if you do want to go down the route of WordPress, let's get you started. Let's, let's get the ball rolling there. Uh, but as I say there, both options are fantastic. Um, both options are going to be able to be reliable, reliably hosted by GoDaddy. And um, yeah, I would say definitely call us and, and put forward your questions if you wanted to know more about WordPress and, and what you can do there. But YouTube is also your best friend with WordPress. So um, I would always say to somebody, if you open up a 30-day trial on the web builder and do the same thing for WordPress, the web builder, you're probably going to be up to speed within one hour, literally. You'll know what you're doing. You'll know how to set everything up. But WordPress, you'll probably be on your 
maybe your fourth or fifth video within an hour. And you'll be learning things as you go. So it can be a bit daunting, but for those of you out there that can learn pretty quickly, give WordPress a go as well and, and make your comparisons. It's all about like what your business needs at the end of the day. So moving forward, building great pages. So the homepage, uh, you want to keep this visually good. You know, I think uh, video content these days is, is really picking up. So like, think about, do you have like a nice video? Like we've got a nice example here on the right of the plant powered pies. And uh, I, think, I think when the site's live, they actually have a video as well. And you can see the steam coming off the pie. And this really makes a difference in the modern world. So your homepage just needs to hit you right there and think, wow, this is what this person's about. This looks great. I want to learn more. Which brings me to think as well, on your homepage, you want to have a nice call to action, um, which we'll actually move on to. So a call to action is like giving the customer a chance to turn the page of your website, turn the page of the book, find out more. It's not usually as simple as just here, buy my product, you know. Um, so have a think about like the websites that you like and the businesses that you work with. When you're on their website, what's usually the first thing you do or what, what do you notice when you're on the site? Is it, do people want to subscribe? Do you, does it offer you a chance to learn more or watch a video? These are all good options to put on your homepage to start the journey for your customers. Uh, because it's no good having wonderful images and wonderful text, but then if they're on their phone, think about it, they need somewhere to click, they need somewhere to go next, you know. So uh, this is a great piece of advice that I always give people, especially if you phone in, we'll point these things out to you as well, you know. Uh, so don't panic if you're thinking, oh, um, I'm not sure if I've got that on my site yet. It's very, very simple, click of a button to add these in as well. There's no crazy functionality involved with setting up action buttons and, and things like that. But this is very key for your homepage. Okay, so the About Us, this is where you can sort of express, express yourself, you know, express your unique tone of voice and really get into the hows and the whys. Like when I buy from any company or like, I've recently started to drink oat milk as opposed to normal milk. And, um, I love reading the side of the bottle, the side of the bottle and, and the about us on the website. I can just, I can almost hear the owner of the company talking to me and I feel like he's in the room and he's given, you know, I just, I just feel so connected to the company because, um, yeah, it's just, he's really, really expressed himself. And that's what I think every business should be doing. You know, why are you passionate about this business? What got you into it in the first place? Maybe before you were a psychotherapist, you were maybe helping family members for free in terms of their emotional well-being. I know I've done that before. Uh, or maybe you've uh, always had an artistic side and you've got into creating greeting cards because you've got your kids at home and they always help you to create stuff. So you thought, why not turn this into a business? These stories are all fantastic in getting people engaged and, and just gaining their trust because nobody wants to just buy from somewhere just because it's there. Like, Yes, obviously we want an easy experience, but that's what we're trying to get across here is you can make your experience as easy as possible for your customers with not having any skills. But this About Us page is where you can really put your own spin on what you do and, and just you know put yourself on people's radar. Cool, so uh, the services page, this is where you're essentially, your services page to me is a bit like what I do at GoDaddy, it's your customer service agent. You want to give all the information as possible, you know, as possible. Uh, think about when you're about to buy something, you're not going to buy unless you know what it costs. Is there a returns policy? Is there a warranty? Um, you know, is there any discounts available? You need to know all of this information, usually, if you're going to buy something. So try and get all of this across in your services page. This is, this is why the services page is there. You don't need to, to harm your homepage or take away from the visual aspect of, the rest of the website. If somebody's on your services page, they're they're looking, to, you know, they're looking to take the next step. So that that's the time to put all that information there. You know, any frequently asked questions. Uh, so yeah, don't be afraid to overload that with any crucial info. That would be my advice there. And yeah, the blog feature, as it says, it is literally the most underrated way 
to impress customers and grow your online presence because <clears throat> it's essentially a news article and it's it's able to be commented on a bit like a facebook post and if you're doing this regularly like once a month even if it's just like what ed said there just to let people know like this time in lockdown guys we're not going to do what we did last time we're going to keep looking after you and we're going to keep it going and we're going to bear our time until we're opened up again i think that was really cool and it, i'm sure ed probably put out a nice uh, statement you know just letting people know that and if you think fast forward six months right anybody coming to do business with ed they're going to look back and see the history aren't they they're going to see what was he doing five months ago what did they post about last month and it just like the more you do that, the more of your business you're giving out there for people to be like, right, okay, I love that about them. And, oh, that's really cool as well, what they've done there. So I would always recommend to post as often as you can, even if it's just to tell a little story about, you know, how the business is operating, what's upcoming, and, um, you know, just keep customers in the loop, basically. And at the end of the day, a Facebook post, um, a blog post, these are what we call a backlink. So technically, Google sees a backlink as a verification of your website. So the more backlinks you have, this increases your organic Google result. So again, you're not just driving more engagement, you're actually improving the SEO of your website as well. So guys, don't be afraid. If it's not a huge story, just post something, you know, express your, your unique tone of voice and just get yourself out there with this blog. And yeah, touching on getting found. Again, this is the, the biggest challenge. And especially in, in your mind, you know, it becomes the biggest, how am I going to get up Google's ranks? There's so much competition, which is true. But um, the thing is, I said earlier, our website builder is constantly being updated. Like I've been here for three years and every few months, there's a new feature. Every few months, there's a new uh, marketing tool added in. Like it's just crazy how much it's advancing. And I can tell you that by the end of the year, it's only going to keep on going and, and growing. So um, whether you're using WordPress or the websites and marketing tool, it works in the same way. You know, you've got to be active on social media um, to just to, to stick with our web builder for a minute. We actually have a, a social media post creator. So if you look at how, say, a famous pizza company, I won't say their name, but if you like your, your food and stuff, when a restaurant posts, they're not just posting a normal Facebook status. They'll actually maybe post a professional image with maybe some text over the front of the pizza. And, or if you're a yoga teacher, you'll do a picture of a sunrise with the text over the sunrise. And these professional posts do not need to be like paid for or you know, outsourced. We've actually just this year included a social media professional post creation tool with over, I think it's got 300 templates for you to choose like a nice image and send it straight out to your Instagram and Facebook from your one dashboard. So like, you're not gonna be flipping from platform to platform and loads of browser tabs open. If you go for the GoDaddy Builder, you'll literally have your marketing campaigns, social media posts, and your website all from one place. And I can't stress like how easy that makes life if you're focused on like producing what you do and. You know, if you're a psychotherapist, your, your time is, is quite valuable. So you don't want to be, you know, spending too much time worrying about this kind of stuff. So, but yeah, um, work on your SEO with the tools that we've got. Build your network on social media. As I say, the most successful people are really active on social media, in my opinion. And then, of course, don't be scared to spend money on advertising. So, like, this isn't something that GoDaddy can sell you. Or, or set up for you. But once you've set up your Google business account that we talked about earlier, that's you connected to Google. And from there, you can start to pay Google to show up as a featured ad. And if you think about the last five years or probably longer than that, um, the featured ads, they're very hard to avoid. Anytime I'm on Google, I, I literally cannot avoid the featured ads. And all, all the big dogs, they're paying for the featured ads as well. So in my opinion, a featured ad is a great way just to get yourself right to the top of Google. You're only gonna pay per click as well, I believe. So honestly guys, between Facebook, Instagram advertising and paid Google ads, none of which you buy from us, you buy from Facebook or you buy from Google, 
Uh, but this is a great way to, to get yourself found. And I would just say, take action and put yourself out there. It's paid on a monthly basis too. So it's not like you're gonna, you know, take a huge risk on it. And yeah, like Ed said, have the dream, but set the small goals and get these old things boxed off and ticked off as you go and you'll start to see results. Mm -hmm. And the favorite conversations we have is when it's six months later, the customer has been doing these things, sending out professional posts, and they're giving us a call and say, Louis, this is great. Um, I need to add more pages. Can you help me? Yeah, let's, let's help you. Uh, you know, it's just fantastic to hear about the success stories and um, all this advice today, take it. It's not going to be hard to start doing. And once you get into a rhythm, it's easy. So a little checklist then, just for your own aesthetics. You can build your website here. If it's an online store or a business card, get it built with ease or let us build it for you. And then you know what to do. You know, you've got your built-in tools to get you found engage with your customers, you know, express yourself in a unique way, and uh, all of that will come together, guys. Thanks for your time, everybody. A few questions here, yeah? I can see a few here. Uh, let's see. Okay, so some interesting questions here. Are your websites hosted with 100% renewable energy? I'm not sure I can give you an answer to that, Nicola. I'll have to look into that one. Uh, but <clears throat> to do a quick demo of creating a website with marketing, I would actually suggest to you, Delroy, log on to godaddy.com. There's a button on the front that says start for free, right? If you were to go there right now, you would see within five minutes how easy it is for you to start doing it. And even still, after a few minutes, if you call up GoDaddy, explain that you've got a business and you're looking to set up. If you're comfortable using that trail, we'll actually build a website for you for free within like a week or so. It's a free build we're offering at the moment, four to five pages. And because of how easy the platform is, you'll be able to go in and edit that and, and take it forward. You know, it's, it's a lot easier to, to edit an essay than just to write it all from scratch, so to speak. That's the way to look at it there. Uh, what's the difference between GoDaddy websites and marketing and managed WordPress? Good question. So managed WordPress is a hosting plan that we've created to make WordPress that much easier to look after. So the only problem with WordPress, if you're starting out and this is all new to you, it's not as simple as having it all in one. You know, if you think of your, your Google phone or your iPhone, you go to the app store and you search for a game or a booking system. There's hundreds of options. Yeah. WordPress works the same. You know, you, you've just got so many different options to choose from. Uh, it's third party as well. So you tend to, you tend to be like wondering which plugin or, or which app do I trust, which ones do I not. And um, yeah, the GoDaddy web builder, this is like, we've took what we like and what we trust, and we've actually created it ourselves too. So GoDaddy has brought in some things like the social media post creator, but mainly GoDaddy has got one booking system, uh, two payment providers for you to select from if you're online, if you're an online store. And the web building software, it's, as I said there, it's all one dashboard. You know, I can't stress how easy that makes things. Whereas managed WordPress, it's sort of, um, yeah, it just makes it easy for you to look after your WordPress site. So all these plugins that you get, our managed WordPress will allow you to update them all in one go. And it will also complete a few other techie things um, as, as you go. So yeah, I would say give us a call as well, Michael, if you want more questions answered on that, okay? Cool, let's see what else we've got here. Yes, you can indeed use the website builder, David, to market and deliver online courses. Yeah, so you would need the premium version of the web builder. Uh, there's standard, premium, and e-commerce. Premium will give you the ability to sell services and allow customers to actually book through your website. So if that's a digital course, David, that is downloadable, then that's fine. If it's a, a live Zoom call course that you're gonna be doing, again, that works as well. Uh, so yeah, you've asked there as well, David, about collecting subscriptions. Uh, if you mean subscription payments, 
this is something that WordPress at the moment is your is your option to do that. Uh, but subscriptions is coming by maybe the end of the year for GoDaddy. As I said, it is a snowball. It's just it's picking up more and more as we go. Subscriptions and paying things off in like a three month basis. This is all pipeline for GoDaddy as well. Alrighty. I think we'll do one more question and then I'll try and answer a few questions via text as well, guys. Let me see. Okay, so I'm uh, just looking for a question I can answer here. Okay, so Vanessa, um, you, you can't do drop shipping with the GoDaddy Builder, just to get that out there for people in case you're wondering. Drop shipping requires uh, you to connect with whoever's doing the, the shipping and everything for you. It's something on WordPress that you'd be able to do. And again, it might be something coming down the line for GoDaddy's web builder. But as I say, we're sort of GoDaddy's web builder is perfect for the small business owner or the, the micro business owner who's like fulfilling their orders and, and sending it out themselves. But basically your website, every time an order is placed, there's an automatic email sent. So there will be a workaround for drop shipping. Maybe you could forward off that email to your supplier and things like that. But you might want to look into YouTube and Google WordPress drop shipping options on YouTube. That'll be a great way for you to, for you to do that. All right. And I'll try and answer some more questions on text, guys. But thanks for having me. And uh, good luck, Ed, as well this year. Thank you, Louis. This was great. Um, I know there have been a lot of questions. Of Louis. Louis will be answering some of them in, in chat. And we'll also be sharing Louis' uh, slides over email. So please look out for that as well. Before we move on, um, let me share some research that GoDaddy did uh, recently. So what we call our state of the nation research. Uh, basically, it's how micro businesses are faring across the UK. Now, micro businesses are businesses with less than 10 employees. Now, more than a year since COVID, uh, first COVID-19 lockdown, our research uh, states that entrepreneurs have defied the odds and there has been an increase of 21% in new ventures across the UK. But let me tell you two stories and before and we move into a next section, uh, two stories of two customers of GoDaddy just for inspiration at the minute. Chris Fryer, um, who's the co-founder of vegan pie shop called MacPie. Now they're based in Newcastle and they had massive plans of supplying to uh, different festivals. And they were also supplying to some pubs across Newcastle as well. Now with the COVID-19 lockdown, they came to GoDaddy, they created a website, online shop, and it has been an, a huge success. And they're now expanding nationwide. They have done already, actually, I ordered from them here in London. Um, the other business which I want to talk about is also uh, is, is a farm, Wonder Farms based out of Highlands. Um, they were supplying previously to farmers markets and, and a local deli, but then as lockdown hit, they couldn't travel as much as, as much. And so they created an online shop with us as well. And within the first 90 days, did over 10K in business from Highlands, the Highlands farm as well. Amazing, amazing, super inspiring stories for all of us as well. Before we get started with the next topic, I would love to hear from you one more time through, through a poll. Um, what support do you need most in running your business? Is it general business advice and support, international trade advice, profile building services, opportunities to connect with like-minded business owners, funding and grants, access to networking events and training, HR and legal support? So once more, is it general business uh, advice and support, international trade advice, profile building services, opportunities to connect with like-minded business owners, funding and grants, access to networking events and training, or HR and legal support? Okay, let's see. Um, all right. So first is general business and uh, general business advice and support at thirty eight percent, followed by profile building services at thirty percent, and then followed by funding and grants at thirteen percent. That's great to know. Um, that's very interesting to see actually, and 
super interesting on general business and advice because um, we have Faith Aspi here from British Chambers of Commerce, um, an organization which many of you might be members of already as it represents the interests of tens and thousands of businesses from all over the UK. BCC is actually an authentic voice of British businesses and is also a leading commentator of the uh, on the UK economy. And it draws um, from powerful network which represents its business interests, which represent business interests in Westminster and also in Brussels and every other part of the UK. Um, Faye, welcome um, to, the, to the webinar as well. Um, how have you been? Yeah, very well, thank you. I'm very pleased to be here. Um, so Faye, how would you describe BCC to somebody who doesn't know? Um, the British Chambers of Commerce is the umbrella organisation for 53 accredited chambers across the UK and 71 British chambers overseas. Here in the UK, we represent approximately 70,000 businesses through membership. Um, but on a day to day basis, we're engaging with around 300,000. Um, we're the only business representative organisation to represent businesses of every size from every sector and we've got full UK coverage. So we help businesses to grow, uh, we help protect their employees, we connect them, we save them money, we facilitate trade and we advocate for them with local, regional and national government. Makes sense. Again, for our attendees, if you have any questions for BCC, please put them in the Q&A section and I'll, I'll ask Bea about all those. Um, Bea, how, how has BCC helped entrepreneurs during the pandemic as well? Well, as we've referred to already during the event, it's had an unprecedented impact on entrepreneurs and businesses and jobs across the country. And every chamber in the network has made huge efforts to support their local communities because chambers of commerce sit at the heart of their business communities. We've done a bit of work to create almost a bit of a, a snapshot, a, a snapshot um, of what the chambers have done to support um, businesses during this um, crisis. So almost every chamber has launched a dedicated coronavirus support hub or web page of some kind. On average, each chamber has had over three and a half thousand COVID related phone calls with their members and another two and a half thousand with non-members. They've sent over two and a half thousand COVID related newsletters or update emails to their members. They've held 61 COVID related virtual or in-person events, which has had an average of attendance of around 1600 for each chamber. They've referred over 2,000 businesses to receive government grants or loans. They've connected 150 businesses to NHS supply chain channels to en enable that procurement of PPE that we heard so much about at the beginning of the crisis. And on average, each chamber's had 13 full-time staff working on COVID support for their local business community. So they really have made some major changes and, and thrown a lot of resource and time at supporting businesses through this through this pandemic. That makes sense. And they touched on it a little bit, but how does BCC Network uh, bring people together as well? Um, COVID times, pre-COVID times as well. There, there's a range of things. So lots of chambers have sector focused forums. Now this isn't an exhaustive list, but just to give you an example. So there'll be construction forums, manufacturing forums, spatial planning forums, transport, HR, net zero, professional services. But some chambers will have specific groups for looking at the needs of their local uh, business community as well. Uh, then on top of that, you've got the networking events, which lots of people will know the Chamber of Commerce Network for, but also educational events. So that could be understanding changes in legislation, roundtable discussions so that they can talk with like minded peers on the challenges that they're facing as a business. Um, and then the opportunity to engage with senior government ministers on shared interests. So just to give an example, on the 12th of May, we're hosting a webinar on the future of the workforce where we'll be joined by the skills minister. Um, so, you know, lots and lots of ways to connect and support businesses through the network. Got it. Um, I'll take two questions also from Q&A section and otherwise. Um, one by Maxine, which is, does it matter which chamber you belong to if your business is online and aimed at a worldwide market? But also a very similar question by Debbie. 
can a British expat working in Portugal still be a member of British Chambers of Commerce? Yeah, so um, most people join their local Chamber of Commerce so that they can make use of uh, the benefits that are specific to their area, but you can join any Chamber of Commerce and we, we have some companies that have joined multiple Chambers or all Chambers. Um, you don't need to be based in the locality where, where you join. Um, I referenced earlier that we've got 71 British Chambers overseas, so those chambers can support um, businesses local to that area as well if they're doing work in the UK too. Um, I think there's a link somewhere to a, a find your local chamber, um, but also if people want to connect with me on LinkedIn, I can put you in touch with the relevant people if that's of interest. Thank you. And does BCC have forums for new sector businesses like FinTech? Yeah, they will do. So um, each chamber operates as an individual business. They're not owned um, by the British Chambers of Commerce. So each service is slightly different. But yes, there will be some chambers offering services for fintech, for example. Got it. Um, and Fink, what is the mood amongst PCC members around the econ economic recovery post-COVID and at, at the minute as well, actually? Um, well, our latest quarterly economic survey, which is the UK's largest independent business survey, we get over 6,000 responses each quarter um, and is a leading indicator of UK GDP growth and business sentiment. Well, we found that business conditions, which won't be surprised to anybody here, have remained historically poor in the first quarter of 2021, but that's linked to the the lockdown severely limiting businesses activity. Um, all the key indicators for immediate business conditions remained in negative territory and well below pre-pandemic levels in quarter one, with 83% of hospitality and catering firms reporting decreased domestic sales in quarter one. But what we are seeing is that 55% of businesses expect turnover to grow over the next 12 months back to the pre-pandemic levels. Got it. That, that makes sense, actually. And any on that point of, of um, increasing revenue as well, any good news stories you could share about BCC members during pandemic and also coming into 2021? Yeah, I've got a few examples that I can think of. So we've got a member um, in Sunderland who's a member of the Northeast England Chamber of Commerce. They're events business and they've really pivoted online and have as a result have won seven American conference contracts and are really growing their business. Their platform can now host conferences, exhibitions, trade events, product launches, awards and large scale networking events, which wasn't something they were able to do pre pandemic. So they've really, really pivoted. Um, we've also heard of um, a therapy center that are members of West Cheshire and uh, North Wales Chamber. Um, now they're a small charity which support people with a a, a range of long-term degenerative neurological conditions and what they've been able to do is turn their exercise classes online and also set up a telephone centre. What that's actually seen them seen is that their website has gone up 70% in terms of donations to the charity from what was 15% pre-pandemic so they've really used their online presence to to change that and increase their, their donations online. That makes sense. And so, Faye, what are the emerging trends that yourself and BCC Network are, are seeing that are coming in the coming months um, that will impact small businesses as well? Um, some of these won't be a surprise, but the, the ongoing impacts of COVID, the COVID-19 economic crisis is going to, to be, with, be with businesses for a little while yet. The transition to the EU-UK trade and cooperation agreement is affecting how businesses do trade and the reopening process from the COVID-19 pandemic and the changing structure of the UK economy is definitely going to impact small businesses. Makes sense. And if I were to start a new business right now, any advice that BCC can offer? Uh, what would be your sort of tips and tricks if I were to start a new business now? Well, my first tip would be to join your local Chamber of Commerce. Um, I, I won't go through the benefits again, as I did at, at the beginning, but they can really connect you with like minded individuals that maybe have had the same challenges that you're facing now, but they had them six months ago. So it can give you some real life hints and tips of how you can overcome some of those challenges. 
um, being part of the chamber is being part of a business community and feeling like you're not alone. Um, they can also connect you to um, other organizations that may be able to provide you with custom or help with your supply chain um, and also networking events to introduce you to um, people that you may have not considered trading with before. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, I'll just take a couple of questions from um, here as well. So Maxine's asked, does the chamber run a mentor system? Yep, some chambers will have a mentoring program. Um, if people want to get in touch with me afterwards, I can direct you to, to those chambers that may offer that service. And Maureen has asked, and I also have a question on this, which is, um, Maureen is a counsellor, as a sole trader, is it advisable to join a chamber or not? And so also on that note as well, if you could talk about BCC support for service-based businesses versus product-based businesses as well. Yeah, so 52% of the chamber's membership are, for, are businesses employing naught to 10 employees. So a large proportion of the chamber's membership um, are sole traders. And while some of them may not be sole traders now, when they first joined the chamber, they will have been and they've grown their business with the chamber and used that support, uh, the support that they offer to do that. Um, so it, it's true that um, in some cases we're known for su supporting international trade, um, but only 30% of our membership are exporters. So the other 70% are domestic businesses. So they're, they're, those domestic businesses are finding value in the network from the protection and the money savings um, schemes that we offer them and their employees through our member benefits such as Chamber HR, Chamber Foreign Exchange, Chamber Finance Finder, plus a, an array of other things. Our advocacy work, so carried out on their behalf for their benefits. So over the last few months, our advocacy work has seen workplace testing put in place so we successfully advocated for the, the extension of paid for workplace testing to businesses with fewer than 50 employees. Um, the coronavirus job retention scheme which we'll know as the furlough scheme we played a really important part in shaping the design and the extension of that scheme which you know many of you will know has provided crucial support for businesses across the UK. Um, we were also instrumental in the spring roadmap and the budget. Um, we work to shape the government's thinking around this um, with a clear commitment to not close businesses once we've reopened and make sure we maintain that continuing support for firms. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, and then um, one last question from, uh, from Q&A. If, if it's too specific, just let me know, Faye, as well. Okay. Uh, Debbie's asked, can I set up a UK company with activity in Portugal? Um, perhaps the cafe has to be a local company, but other activities under umbrella company. So uh, maybe if you could provide advice about sort of setting up a UK company and perhaps having activity elsewhere internationally as well. Um, I don't know the specifics on that, but I'll be able to find out. So again, if you if you drop me a line, very happy to put you in touch with our trade team. who will be able to answer that question for you. Got it. And maybe last one we'll take from Diane, which is how does BCC uh, lie alongside groups such as Business Gateway? Um, so the Chambers will be linked with all of these schemes as they are with things like the, the local enterprise partnerships. They also work closely with FSB, Make UK, CBI. Um, so they will be included on those, on those gateways. And, and actually Chambers are the gateways for many other schemes as well. So for example, the Kickstart scheme that's been announced recently, the Chamber is, the, many Chambers will be a gateway for that as well. Makes sense. Cool. Thank you, Faye. This was very, very, very insightful. And it's great to hear all about BCC and how you're supporting everyday entrepreneurs as well. There might be a few questions on the chat, so I'll let you have a look at that also. But okay. thanks a lot um, for all the insights. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the speakers also, Ed, Louis, Faye. Um, and thank you everybody for joining uh, us today. I know how busy you are, so I'm really hoping you found this session useful, interesting, and will join us for the subsequent sessions as well. There was a lot of chat uh, and interaction, which is fantastic, and we'll follow up on most of the questions later as well. If you have some time for um, 
post event survey, please do fill it in. Um, it's in the chat box as well. It will help us incredibly to shape the future sessions and actually more sessions like these in the future as well. I know we shared a lot today um, and we have seen tips, tricks on how to change business models, update your business models for whatever the future holds for us as well, which I'm hoping is positive. Um, we're passionate about helping our customers. So if you found this useful, check out our blog, give us a call if you're stuck with your GoDaddy products. We are more than happy to help, um, definitely happy to help. Finally, we love to feature our GoDaddy customers on in our advertising. I don't know if you've seen our ads, but it, it has Magpie on it, uh, somebody I sort of spoke about earlier. Um, and we would love to share your story as well in our advertising. So please tag us on social media. Uh, please share your story here. And we would love to share it across our advertising portfolio as well. With that, that's it from my side for today. Um, Thank you so much for joining us. I really hope you found it insightful. I hope, I really hope you found it useful for yourself as well. Um, thank you and see you uh, on the next one. Bye.